the audience involved in the normal filming of the show, so it's going to be a bit different and we're going to get y'all involved. So for the first half, we're going to have a couple of announcements about what's happening in the community, and then Albert's going to give y'all his famous trivia questions, but it's open for the audience to answer. Help me, please. <laughs> um, and then after that, we're going to open up, and if you have questions for them, we're going to let you ask those questions to them. And then we'll have a short intermission, and then we'll do second half, all right? So everybody ready? Thank you guys for coming. One of my grandsons, one of my favorite grandsons. I'm his favorite. His second favorite, I see, has not made it yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is he on his way? He's on his way. Well, that's a, Billy, why don't you introduce your producer? Yeah, our uh, MC tonight and our producer of the Albert and Billy show, she's put up with us for two years now, is Allie Press Pursley. Pursley! <laughs> It's not been that bad, has it? <laughs> She's the prettiest one of us. I uh, want to thank all you guys for being here tonight. It means a lot to us for y'all coming out to celebrate our 100th episode. Hard to believe, Papa. Well, do you know why they're here? Uh, I guess to see us. The fire department's got it all mixed up. They're oh, serving that fish is? tonight. Mm -hmm. These people know you don't eat fish on Saturday. Okay, that's what it is. <laughs> we got chicken eaters in the house tonight, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> I see some old class. I see some classmates of mine. You do. I didn't mean Ooh. to call them old. I didn't mean to call them old. You're done insulting somebody. We're not even two minutes in. <laughs> Who do you see that you graduated with? Jeanette Thurman. Oh, yeah. Chris's grandma, one of my best friends. I haven't saw you in a long time. How you doing? Doing fine. Good. I'm glad you're here tonight. And like, like I was saying, I, I'm, we're both very glad that you guys made it out here tonight to uh, celebrate our 100th episode with us. And uh, this will air on TV probably in what, Allie, two weeks? Next, Next week. Uh, and feel free to ask us questions later on if you want to ask us any questions. Uh, we'll answer them the best we can. If anybody has some good trivia questions to uh, trip Papa up, bring it on. We have an author in our audience. That wouldn't be We hard. do. We do. Wouldn't we got to get, and I, I actually talked to Ruth uh, about a week ago, maybe. And uh, she's, she said she'd be a guest on our show, so we'll have to get that scheduled for sure and talk about her book. Oh, it's an interesting book. It is. But I can't believe she wrote like that. Really? Oh, the things that she told she had to do. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me, Ruth. So you liked it? Yeah, it's interesting. interesting. Good, good. You wrote a book before, hadn't you? Yeah, but that's just one. Just one. I tried a second one and it didn't work out. Didn't work out. <laughs> Nor the third. <laughs> well, uh, we're not going to do many announcements tonight, but I do want to remind everybody, there is a big event coming up uh, October 27th at 4 o'clock, I do believe, is the time. Uh, it's going to be the Boo Bash. I think this is the fourth annual Boo Bash. They always have a great crowd at this event. We judged the uh, costume contest last year. I remember. And we're doing that again this year. I think you need to get us a raid. I know it. I know it. <laughs> so come out to that, though, folks. It is a really good time. Uh, like I said, I believe it's the fourth annual. Every year they've had it, they've had a amazing crowd that were there for that. Oh, yeah. And really, there's not. they've not had good weather at that event yet. The first year it rained, still still people come out though uh, to support it. Last year, remember, it was bitterly cold. It'll be cold this week, this, this year too. It probably will, probably will, but it never seems to affect the turnout, so that's a good thing. We're hardy people. That's right. Well, let's uh, give this audience a taste of your trivia. Last week's trivia. Oh yeah, this is last week's trivia, now, folks. Feel free to answer because I do not try to intimidate Billy. Yeah, right. I don't try. To, <laughs> I don't try to ask hard questions. Honest, 
Jeanette, have you ever caught me in a lie? Don't answer that. <laughs> the, when I was the monitor at the hot lunch for seven years, I would be just standing there working and a thought would come to me and I'd just jot it down. And so the questions that I ask, I don't look for them. They just come to me and I jot them down. And I have got probably a thousand in the future. I hope I'm here to do the last one. Well, those thoughts sure are some hard thoughts that come to your head. I'll tell you that. But for your sake, when I get to the, this week's trivia, if you don't answer every one of them, you should be whipped. <laughs> they must be easy then. They're easy. Oh, oh really? You're going to make it easy for them, but it's always hard for me. Well, I thought they just popped in your head. Well, <laughs> they didn't this week, did they? <laughs> They're easy. But, this, but last week, these are what I asked Peter last week. First question. We'll Duh. see if anybody in the audience knows the answer to it. Yeah. We'll, okay. Duck blank. D U C T duct. Oh, tape. Tape, tape. tape. yeah. Tape. Okay. I got that one right last week. If yeah. you are a gambler and you're betting, what are you looking for when you go to place your bet? I have to see how hard these questions are. Look the at odds. these people. You want to know the odds before you <laughs> The odds, your okay. That actually crossed my mind, but I didn't say it. You guys, you guys that have a gun and that hunt, if you draw a bead, what are you doing? Aim. You're taking aim. Good job. The warrior princess's name? Oh, Xena. Xena. Biddy gets one right Go every bit. now and then. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. In Africa... There is an animal called a wildebeest, but it also has a three-letter name. Oh, my God. Wildebeest, but it has a three-letter name. Elk, is it? No, that's no. not it, is it? That would be here. See what I deal with? Well, it's G-N-U. If you ever work properly. Like puzzles, I would ever get that, right, people? Come on. A king who was well known for his love of gold. His name was King Midas. Midas. Good job. <laughs> this state is known as the Hawkeye State. Oh. Good start, job, everybody. Good job. It can be a horse's name or a bean's name. What kind a of A horse's bean? name or a, horse. a bean? A bean that you eat. Pinto. Pinto. Good job, Karen. <laughs> if, if you are cunning, or I might even say wily, what are you called by a name with only three letters, animal-wise? You're Sly as a Sly. fox. Sly as a fox. Sly. Yes. Okay, last one. <laughs> a great lady in the sports world with first name of Steffi. Graf. Good job. Who's answering all those things? Uh, Dan. All right. Come on in, folks. So now, I guess this is going to be this week's trivia. This is this week's trivia. This week's trivia. Oh, wow. And okay. You better get every one of these right now, I'm telling you. I can't believe you're making them easy. Well, I even told him to make them hard so y'all can get a taste of what it's like. And he did the opposite. The horror flick street. Elm street. Elm oh, street. good job. If you want a mule to turn right, what word do you use? G. G. Good you job. If you want him to turn left, what do you say? Oh. oh. There you go. The plea <laughs> from the sea is blank, blank, blank. The, the what from the sea? If you're out on the ocean and you send a plea, what is it you? SOS. SOS. Good the job. plea from the sea. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. These, this is the way the thoughts come to me. Sure. The plea from the sea. I thought that'd be easy. You always say that and they're not. The new cop on the beat. 
He's called a rookie. Rookie. Rookie cop. Good teamwork. We all got that one. <laughs> the shout you hear in Spain if you attend a bullfight is. Ron. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Ole! <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Unser and Mr. Gore has the same first name. Al. Al. You know Al Unser, the sport of this race driver. And what was Al Gore? Well, the Gore was a giveaway. I think that's what <laughs> tipped everybody off there, Papa. McDonald's place, not the fast food. Farm. Farm. Good job. I've got a joke, but I can't tell it. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can. Tell it. <laughs> these three, these three men were uh, being interviewed for a job, and and uh, well, there's Caleb. There's your second favorite grandson there's in the audience. <laughs> Let, let me, I don't want to take that. It takes too long. Let, your cousins, your cousins. <laughs> I've got too many other things I want to talk about. Oh, okay. Well, he don't want to tell a joke yet. Your cousin's dad's relationship to you is uncle. your uncle. Good job, Karen. Forty winks in Mexico is called a yeah. siesta. That sounds prettier. We than got that. a smart audience tonight. They're doing good. These are easy, baby. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> the down under bird is called an emu. Three well, they did not say emu, Papa. <laughs> They didn't say emu, you just gave it away. Did, did I say that? You did. You did. It's the first mistake. They ever. do look like an ostrich though, don't they? They do. I've saw one close up before. I don't remember where, but they a, look just like them. A four letter word for a can of Bowser's food or Rover's food is you're feeding your your Bowser or your Rover, what uh, what what do you name yours? The name Chow. of what? Chow, is that what you said? No, it's a brand. Alpo. Alpo. Good job, whoever said that. The furry red Muppet is Elmo. Elmo. Aren't these easy? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> The gold, and slow down, you don't have to say them so fast, slow down. The gold medal organization in three initials is... The gold medal organization. Gold medal organization. Give it to me in three letters. Can you give a better clue than that? Are you talking about the Olympics? International IOC. IOC. International Olympic Committee. Good job, Dan. They give you gold medals, but they're not all gold. They're just partially gold. Oh, really? That's a ripoff, isn't it? Hold up your hand. Hold up your <laughs> hand if you're married. You better get this. <laughs> now listen. Two, not tie N O T K N O T K N O T. Two not tying words that you say. I do. I do. <laughs> when I said mine, I was scared to death. <laughs> Carolyn you should was, have been. You were like 16, weren't you? No. 18. <laughs> Carolyn was 16. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the preacher didn't know it. We lied. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one lie, Jeanette. <laughs> there's one. <laughs> You never caught me in one, Jeanette. <laughs> that, she was a... Did, would you get Slutorn or, or Valdictorn? Jo, Joanne was Valdictorn. Anytime right. that I had a problem that I couldn't work, I went to Jeanette. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. A three-letter word to describe an old horse. A nag. <laughs> <laughs> you did you did well you did well i think you felt the score but the, i thought the audience did great on that give yourself a round of applause for that appreciate it <laughs> and now 
if you have a question for Billy. I don't think whip, so. Or whip, Papa. Whip it, whip it on him. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish somebody would give you a good trivia question. Come on, folks. Don't anybody have something to, to trip to him up with? To keep everything level and even, it'd have to be something that, you, that just came to you that you thought of. You don't look it up in the dictionary. No, 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 no. I have to tell him all the time. Uh, the viewers know this. Like, can you keep it? When he's asking me, I'm like, can you please keep it like 1980 and above? Because <laughs> I do not know those questions from way back when. But when they come to me, they don't come to me by year. I know, but it seems like uh, they never come to you with 1980 and above, though. I can't help it. You just trying to make me look bad, ain't it? No. <laughs> Constance, put it to him. What is the area east of the Mississippi? What is the largest area east of the Mississippi? What is the largest area east of the Mississippi? It's not Tennessee. <laughs> uh, Michigan? No. So we're talking about a state, correct? Several states. Several states. It has a name. New England? No. Southeast? No. <laughs> Uh, now come on, Mr. Smart Guy. Help Thanks for the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's east, right east of the Mississippi. Yes. The largest area east of the Mississippi. Several states, you said. Appalachian Trail. No. Close. Appalachian Mountains. Close. Niagara Falls. <laughs> <laughs> that was a terrible guess. <laughs> the it's the Cumberland. The Cumberland. Several states. Several states. Several states. Has several different names. Cumberland Trail. Cumberland Gap. Maybe the. Who who discovered that? You aren't supposed to ask her. She's just oh, asking you. Yeah. You tell you. There you go, Cassandra. Good job, Constance. You got him. That gave, <laughs> that gave me a thought for another question. <laughs> All right, Dan. I got one from Papa. Good, good. This, this famous director, okay, directed The Day the Earth Stood Still, the original one. And also the sound of music to work. Directed the sound of music and the day that New York stood still. <coughs> Allie knows, don't you? Oh. Allie's my lifeline, folks. Um well you're supposed to at least try, at least try on yours. No, I, that's out of my category. <laughs> The Sound of Music, very popular movie, I remember but, the uh, movie, but I don't remember the other one. You know who directed The Sound of Music? Uh, Lifelines, anybody? Robert Wise. Robert Wise was a wise man that tripped yeah. Papa up on this day. <laughs> I knew the wisest man that ever lived. <laughs> Okay, this will be good. <laughs> this is not that hard, but it might throw you up. What's the name of the second largest plateau in the world? The second largest plateau in the world. In the world? In the world. And we're living in it. We're the Cumberland Plateau? I got it. I'll give myself a hand. <laughs> It is. That was a good one, Cliff. You made me look good. I'm sorry to say that. I like an idiot All right, Ruth, what you got? Who is Bledsoe County's most famous outlaw? Who is Bledsoe County's most famous outlaw, Papa? I don't know, but he's buried. 
<laughs> and I know where he's buried. And it wasn't me, it wasn't. Uh, you do know where he's buried? Yeah. But Hold I didn't, up. I didn't know him. Well, I didn't think you knew him personally. But you should know this before me because this is way before my time. Yeah. Is he the one or that is buried, uh, what is it, north to south or something? Uh, I have read it, but my rememberer is broke. <laughs> he sure is good at dishing it out, but... Yes, I did know that. Is it... Uh, James A. Murrell? Yeah. Murrell? John. Murrell. John A. Murrell. Okay. You're good, baby. I'm doing good. <laughs> Papa's in a drought. <laughs> I, never made, I never made a claim when I started the trivia that I could answer. That you were answering it. I can ask. We're seeing that, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else got a question that Papa and I can get right? Go ahead, buddy. Which author of <clears throat> fictional novel about dinosaurs is spawned by beings? Oh, no. Wow, that's a pop question there. Uh, what was the question? Say it one more time. Which author wrote a fictional novel about dinosaurs that spawned five movies? It spawned five movies? So, yeah, is it Jurassic Park? And the subsequent. Oh. oh, crap. Ruth. <laughs> Ruth. <laughs> oh. I think he probably produced it, maybe. He was a director. Director. Dang it. I don't, does anybody know? <laughs> Well, what is it? Tell us. Michael Crichton. No. Michael Crichton. Now, you think I'll remember that next time I need that? I'm just trying to get you to get one right here. I'm trying to help you out. I, I'm good at asking. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else got one? <clears throat> An easy one, maybe? <laughs> Easier. <laughs> Who's the newest intern of WUAG radio? <laughs> I'll tell him the answer. Zach. I know him quite well. And if you oh, ever okay. if you ever hear him sing, you'll know he does not sing soprano. Zach. No, it's Zach, yeah, and he's actually here. <laughs> he can catch yeah, he got one right, finally. <laughs> he can carry the whole middle <clears throat> section of the song. Yeah, he's definitely got a deep voice. Uh, deep, deep. He walked in the first day, I never met him, and here's this 16, 17-year-old kid, and he's like, hey, nice to meet you, you know? <laughs> the voice just doesn't match up. You've already had one. Oh, do it again. Come on. Come on, Constance. This is easy. All right. What is the largest state east of the Mississippi? Now she got the state. <laughs> the largest state east of the Mississippi. Florida. He said Florida. Uh, I say. Oh, he is in the right neighborhood. Georgia. Georgia. Did Cliff get that one? Yeah. Oh, we'll have to give him the applause. <laughs> That has to. <laughs> that, you want some flowers? <laughs> that has to be right because every time we ever went to Florida, yes. three three days to get through Georgia. It seems like it takes forever to get there. Two days to get to Atlanta. No kidding, Cliff. <laughs> 130 miles. <laughs> Atlanta is crazy traffic now, crazy. Well, I used to think it, Atlanta is bad, but when I went to New England uh, with Aunt Cindy a few years ago, 
somehow I got stuck driving in New York City. Um, there's nothing like that. I mean, I'd take Atlanta any day over that. <clears throat> they will literally run you over. They do not. I've never seen so many birds flipped in my life. <laughs> Carolyn said that when she went through there, that you could actually buy a hot dog from a vendor on the street. You can't. No, they're good. That was a good part of it. But good luck getting over there to it. Next time I go, I will be taking a taxi everywhere because, uh, yeah, Atlanta, Chattanooga, they don't have nothing on that. The southern hospitality has to end. You got to get mean just to survive. <laughs> I had to get rough with them just to make an exit. And I remember we saw, I finally got to this exit. I remember saying, I don't care if it's a dump, we're stopping. I can't go no more. And, uh, but luckily we lucked up and there was a big Marriott. <laughs> no, a Hilton, a Hilton, big fancy Hilton. So it worked out pretty good for me. But I'll never do it again. Never. Caleb, you got any questions? <clears throat> Ask Billy something. Ask Papa so Let's have him get one right. What year did the Skinner plane crash? That's a good one. He, he's not going to know that. It's in the 70s, definitely, isn't it? I don't know. I'm <laughs> 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 Caleb! <laughs> He say, ask uh, what year did uh, the guy Leonard Skinner, uh, was it the lead singer, Caleb? No, Do what? Yeah. It was all of them? No, they were like five of them. Okay. Then one guy stay off the way, one guy Brandon, do you have any idea what year it was? I'm going to say And I'm just going to go with that because I don't know. Yeah, so <laughs> we need somebody out there Googling it. <laughs> let me, let me uh, tell you a story. This is true. I had a man to call me. I've had several people to give me jokes to tell. And one man called me at home the other night and said, Everett, I've got a question I want you to pose for Billy in your next trivia. I said, okay. Oh, really? What is it? He said, just ask him what is Duke's mixture. Now, those of you that used to smoke, can you remember a little bag of tobacco called Duke's Mixture? Yes. Or am I the only one? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what I thought he was talking about. Wow. And so I said, well, it would be tobacco. He said, no. Seven? No, not tobacco. He said, just ask him what is Duke's Mixture. And I said, well, you tell me so I'll know. He said, I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with that? I, I'm not going to give you his name. <laughs> Is he in this audience? No. Okay. All right. And the answer to Leonard Skinner is 1977. I would say it just came to me like you always say, but Ruth told me. <laughs> Here, here's my question. Who's, who's, who's Mr. Skinner? <laughs> Leonard Skinner. <laughs> Seventies, come on! I remember Elvis. You mean? <laughs> that got me all choked up. Hang on. <laughs> Let's take a break. You didn't know who Leonard Skinner was. Okay. What country does the USA decide to France. You know that one. Yay, let's get you, you finally. Know you know finally. <laughs> Do you know why the Statue of Liberty stands like she does? Tell, do tell, do tell. She can't sit. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Ready? All right, so now it's time for intermission, Miss Sally. All right, so now it is intermission. You guys, Cliff, is ice cream shop open? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I bet it is. Hey, did you tell, why don't you tell them that? What was really funny? We got a prank call one time when we were doing the countdown, and the person was said they had some kind of wood goats or something for sale. Oh, yes. Yeah, I don't know who did it. Anyway, they, they called, they left the number. 
Mm -hmm. But he, he had to hurry up and get rid of them, like ten of them really fast, so they were going to take them and kill them or something. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we put the number out on the air, and the guy called. People called this guy's number, and he goes, "I ain't got any jokes to sell, but I do have paper to sell." So anyway, it worked out really good. It worked so, out. Like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> It was a prank call and it backfired on him because everybody started calling him. <laughs> you said something about the ghost we call the pain. And it yes. It was really funny and people started calling him and the guy called in and said, hey, thanks for producing all those customers. Yeah, he did. <laughs> But so he started getting some prank calls, but hey, it serves him right, I think. <laughs> All right, but we can't go on an intermission, folks. How long, Allie? Ten minute intermission. All right, everyone, we're going to get started. Um, in the second half, we're going to be doing sports, albertology, and jokes. We're going to have jokes from Albert, and then if y'all have any jokes you want to tell them, you can tell them. And y'all better. And then after Bring the show, if y'all want pictures made with them, we'll line up and take pictures up against this wall, okay? Everybody ready? Welcome back to the Albert and Billy show. Papa, this is our 100th episode. Can you believe it? Do I look that much older? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. But uh, it's kind of hard to believe, though, in all seriousness. It's hard to believe. And do you realize that nobody left? I know it. I know it. That's pretty good. How much did you pay him? <laughs> <laughs> Listen <at> him. <laughs> Free ticket plus? <laughs> but uh, you are watching the 100th episode uh, on Valley TV and YouTube. And uh, we are. it's being filmed live here at the Nickel Row Music Hall in front of a live studio audience tonight. And they've been great. You guys have been great. I appreciate it. Just, just give you the big head? No, no, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. 100. It might, though. It might. I might not fit out the door tonight. <laughs> might, might get an ego on you here. <laughs> well, it's a great day for sports. I was so glad for the first time in about two years it wasn't painful to watch UT play football today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It has been a long two years for UT fans. It has been very, very hard. So it was so nice to see them beat Auburn of all people. Didn't see that coming. I don't think we have defeated Auburn at Auburn for about 30 years. Yeah, I think it was our first win against them, period, since 1999. Well, yeah, but that would be at Knoxville, but I'm talking about yeah. at... I don't Auburn, know on that one, do you? Auburn is known as the Auburn Tigers. They're also known as the Plainsmen. Oh, I, had a, yeah. I had a friend that told me that he always went to Tennessee games no matter where they played. And he said that Auburn is known as the loveliest village on the plains. The That's the reason they're called the Plainsmen. I didn't know that. The I Tennessee knew about the War Eagle. And the War Eagle. Yeah. Tennessee is just the Vols. And she's just the Vols, good old Big Orange, the Volunteers, and they kicked the War Eagles' butts today. Well, now, <laughs> the score would indicate it was a close game. It really wasn't. But it was not that close. No. I, don't, I don't really think it was. But, of course, <laughs> it could have been different had they got that onside kick. Yeah, I know. They, I agree with that. And the coach even said that they've got to get better at closing out games. Yeah, I agree. They let but them score they, at the end, and then they had a chance to get the ball back. But it didn't happen, and we got our first SEC win since 2016. An SEC win is important because you have to play, I think, eight games. Yes. Eight conference folds. And so we didn't win any last year. It was horrible. In the SEC. So yeah. now we've got one, and next week it's Bama. We can beat them too, can't we? <laughs> I don't gonna say no comment on that one. <laughs> It'd be a miracle, but hey, anything can happen. I was not brimming with confidence today either. I wasn't either. I thought, oh, here we go. Another they were ranked number out. 21 in the nation. And they were a top 10 team. Two I weeks think we ago. were ranked number 210. Yeah, <laughs> that's about right, Papa. 
We still don't have a running game, but uh, the quarterback finally played like he should be playing. He had a career day today. He did. He had two, 328 yards and two mm -hmm. TDs. But uh, we're, we're, we're lacking that 100-yard rusher. The top guy today had 50 yards. Oh, the running game is just sad. So in the sad. SEC, you're not going to win many games if your top rusher gets only 50 yards. No. No, because every play they have to do is pass the ball. The problem is the offensive line, though. It's pretty much non-existent. I, I saw Mr. Johnny Boynton today. How many remember Johnny Boynton? When Johnny played at Knoxville, we had a good team. When Johnny went to the pros, he went to the Miami Dolphins. And I saw him today, and yesterday, and I said, Johnny, I want to tell you uh, something I heard about you a long time ago, but I never thought to tell you. When he played, he was in the offensive line. And I heard people say of him that he could take out the whole side of his line. Dang. Whenever no they got ready to go. roll the ball. Yeah. And he just kind of bashfully said, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a big man. Yeah, Still they is. Were, they were Still good is. when he played, weren't they? Still is. And what about Bledsoe last night? Yeah. Go Warriors. Yeah. We had to go into overtime to do it, but we shut them out. Shut them out. It was a there was no offense at all in that game, but uh, <laughs> the defense brought it. That's for sure. But hey, they they got it. Three nothing win over Polk County last night. It was broadcast live on WAT. Would Would you rather win by one point or a hundred points? Don't care as long as you win. A win is a win. <laughs> a win is a win is a win. That is amen to that one. Well, Florida beat Vanderbilt today. I thought Vandy was going to pull it off. I did too. And you guys, they, they had it till the very end, didn't they? I wanted to talk a whole lot about uh, football, so I wouldn't have to talk about baseball. I have no problem with that. My Dodgers. Oh, wait. Never mind. I don't have a problem with that. My Dodgers. His Dodgers got beat. <laughs> did they get beat by my Braves? No. No. They got beat by the Mil... Milwaukee. Did Mil they beat? So they did beat the Milwaukee Braves. Brewers well, defeated good, my Dodgers off. yesterday, six to five. But listen, before the Atlanta Braves were the Atlanta yep, Braves, true. they were in Milwaukee. That's right. And but the Brewers are going to be hard to beat. Are they? Yeah, they're going to be hard to beat. I admit I haven't kept up with baseball this year. And Houston played. Uh, what was it? Boston uh, today? Uh, no. I don't know. They're the defending champ, so. Yeah. They, they played a game today. Well, they may have something to say about it, man. Well, we'll have to wait they, and see. They might defend that title. We'll wait and see. We sure will. <laughs> but I don't want to talk about baseball. Good. Good. Because <clears throat> your Dodgers got beat. I've been a Dodger fan <clears throat> since 1947. When they were in Brooklyn? Yeah. They were in Brooklyn. And the, the reason I became a Dodger fan, that was the year that Jackie Robinson became a player in the major leagues. He was already established as a baseball star in the Negro Leagues. Well known, very good. And the general manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers decided to take a risk and bring in a black person to play major league baseball. Had never been done. But he said he was going to try it, and he did. And when Jackie Robinson joined a 24-member team, he made number 25. Mm -hmm. 24 men on that team didn't like him, didn't want him. Mm -hmm. Every city they played in, they didn't want him, they didn't like him. He got nothing but booze everywhere, but one man on that Dodger uh, team decided to befriend him, and his name was Pee Wee Reese. He was the shortstop for the Brooklyn Dodgers. And Jackie Robinson won over the hearts of his teammates and the nation before the year was up because he could steal home base. <laughs> he was something else. And I've got, uh, one of my kids bought me the book, number 42. Did y'all know that the movie 42 was filmed right over here in Chattanooga? No, I didn't know that. Ebbets Field? was where they filmed it. Not Ebbets Field, that was Brooklyn Dodgers. 
uh, what what is that uh, stadium over Engle there? Stadium. Engle Stadium. Joe Engle. Uh, that's where they filmed it. They refurbished the ballpark so they could film because it hadn't been used in a long time. Oh, I didn't know that. But learn something new every day. Jackie Robinson. Good ball player. Good ball player. Yeah, he was. Wow. So that's when I became a Dodger. And so later when we would go to Dodger games, I would hang around with the kids to get an autograph of one of the players. And so one year, Steve Garvey was playing first base for the Dodgers, and he was down there signing autographs. Just They'd hand it to him, and he'd scribble something, hand it back up, and get another one. And when I got up there at my turn, with my, I stood head, head to shoulder over every one of those little kids. <laughs> When I got up there, I said, Mr. Garvey, he looked up, and I said, I've been a Dodger fan since 1947, and this autograph is for my wife. Her name is Carolyn. He wrote to Carolyn with hugs and kisses, Steve Garvey. Dude. Handed back that to him. And it was just wonderful. My wife was in heaven. But later on that year, he left his wife. <laughs> That messed Carolyn and Steve Garvey up, and I had her back. <laughs> okay, sports is over. Well, that was a short sports. All right. I well, all that matters is UT won. <laughs> I've got some things I want to talk about in Albertology. Oh, yeah. It's time for good old Albertology, his How favorite time part of the have? show. How many? 30 minutes, Papa. Oh, good. <laughs> How many of you can remember all the names of the Beatles? Name me some of them. He knows them. John, John, Paul, George. Obviously, uh, John Lennon. Paul McCartney. George. Ringo Starr. All right. These, these fellas had 45 gold albums, 39 platinum. Yesterday, I'm sure you remember that. You want me to sing a little bit of it? No. No. <laughs> it's the most recorded song in history with 2,500 different singers recording it in their own rendition. What song is it? Yesterday. Yesterday. They have the record for the most number one singles in the United States with 20. In 2000, the combination album of all their number ones <coughs> was released and sold 3.6 million copies in the first week. Good Lord, that's a lot. They are the most successful recording group in history with 170 million albums sold and home is Liverpool, England. I think it's safe to say they, they made a whole lot of money. Garth Brooks. He made a lot of money too. Still is. <laughs> I wish Caleb hadn't left because we went had to, to go to band practice. We went to uh, Gatlinburg one year and, and they were, I some guy this. was going to, he was imitating Garth Brooks. I remember and Caleb this. jumped down and he started doing it and everybody started watching <laughs> Caleb instead of the man on the stage. <laughs> His first name is Troyal, C R O Y A L. Really? He has 16 gold, al gold albums, 16 platinum. He's the best-selling male recording artist in history. Mm -hmm. With 128 million albums sold, he is definitely a superstar. Yeah. Vince Gill, not so bad either. I love to hear Vince Gill sing. I just wish... Uh, how many of you know Larry Pooh? <laughs> Thank everybody in this room. <laughs> Larry Pooh... <laughs> Sang that song, uh, what, uh, the number one song that he sings? Were we Garth Brooks? Yeah, no. Go, go, oh, Vince go Gill. Yeah. Larry Poole sang that at our church. Beautiful. Beautiful. He could have told us about some Leonard Skinner. He loves Leonard Skinner. <laughs> if you know Larry Poole, you know that. <laughs> Vince had 19 Grammys, more than any other artist. He sold 24 million albums. He's got uh, 18 CMA awards since 1990. Uh, Not bad. Beyonce. 
You know what her last name is? Knowles. Knowles? Mm-hmm. How'd you know that she, her name was Knowles? Well, gee, that was so hard and all. I don't know. It True. just come to me, like you say. <laughs> Yeah, it happened after 1980. That's why I knew. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> anyway, through her album, through her albums, through her movies, and through her TV commercials, Miss Knowles earned eighty million dollars in one year. Eighty million dollars in one year. I've never made that That's, much in my lifetime. That must be nice. I'm not through yet, nice. though. <laughs> You're on your way. <laughs> <laughs> Elvis. You know what Elvis's middle name is? Aaron. A R O N. You should let them guess that one. They probably knew that. Oh, really? Yeah. He's he's pretty famous, you know. Just a little bit. Did you know his middle name? I didn't know it, but I bet some people in here did. I've never seen Aaron spelled A-R-O-N. Always they have two A's, A-A-R-O-N. But anyway, he had 22 number one singles in the United States, more than anyone else. Most uh, chart hits with 131. Hound Dog and Don't Be Cruel is the third most successful single of all time. Really? He appeared in more than 30 movies, earning about $150 million. That was a whole lot of money back then, though. Yeah. <laughs> was that after 1980? No. That was way before. He, he's, he's in four hall of, halls of fame. He, he's in uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He's yeah. in the Gospel Hall of Fame. Yeah. He's in the Country Music Hall of Fame, and he's in the Rockabilly Hall of Fame. Second, he might be the only person to be in all of those. I would think so. Yeah. Second best rec rec recorder of all time with 118 and a half million copies. Pretty dang good, Papa. I thought I'd do some of the musicians. Yeah. Since uh, this is a. Our radio, radio show, and, yeah, and it kind of makes sense, don't it? Yeah, and uh, I, I don't want to take up too much time. I want to save some time for jokes, but I'm sure you are aware of the uh, limitation that is being placed on society about plastic straws. Been hearing a little bit about that. Red yeah. Lobster this week issued a, an edict that. If you want a straw, you got to ask for it. You got to ask for a straw. You got to ask for a straw. And and this this uh, this is getting worse and worse around the world. Uh, this seafood restaurant, that's where Karen and I always like to go, estimates the change in what they're going to do about replacing plastic straws will eliminate 150 million plastic straws per year from more than their seven for their from their 700 restaurants so they're to, they're doing their best they can to improve the situation but it's it's a bad situation and then Sears Sears Roebuck and company they filed for bankruptcy this week and uh Sears that, did? Yeah. That's Kmart too, but of course Kmart was already on the skids and, and Kmart's been on the skids ever since Walmart came well, out. It, it's it's uh I, I, y'all know what's causing it. What's causing it? A place called Amazon. Yeah. And you know what? You know what hurt Pike one more than anything? This is pure Albertology. Well, since it's Albertology, that makes sense. Go for In my it. opinion, what hurt has hurt Pipe more than anything is malls and cars. Because before we got cars, you had to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> when I worked for the store, in, it started in 1953, we took groceries to people on rolling stores. Everybody had one. In this town, there were probably four or five went all well all over the county. 
people came in from Crossville with rolling stores. Slate Marsh up the valley had one. You went to people's homes with their groceries and their cow feed and their horse feed and their kerosene and their tobacco. But some place you'd go, there wasn't even a road, no gravel. You'd get stuck when it rained and you'd have to take your axe and pole out. Times were very different back then. And so people would come to town riding on the back of coal trucks and go here to the courthouse and sit on the lawn and eat their dinner where they'd gone and bought a nickel's worth of bologna and crackers or a nickel's worth of cheese and crackers. Mm -hmm. and, and I popped popcorn for the theater goers all day long on Saturday and watched those people sit over there on the courthouse yard and they catch the ride back home on the back of a coal truck. It, and you would see Pikeville people walking just like in Gatlinburg, four abreast, up and down the streets. They had all day long to just be around. I've always thought Pikeville could be like a, a mini Gatlinburg. We have the scenery and the beauty here. Uh, it could be a, a tourist destination. It, that's a shame. I, I think it, it really could be. You and Vicky, Sounds like it used to be. You and Vicky need to come up with something. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll get right on that. <laughs> okay. Now I want you to name the candy bar that each clue I furnish you with. Okay. A famous swashbuckling trio of old. Three Musketeers. Three Musketeers. That used to be Eddie's favorite candy bar. An Indian burial ground. Mounds. Dang, we got a smart audience. <laughs> a galaxy. Milky Way. Milky Way. A red planet. Mars. Mars bar. Not laughing out loud. Snicker. Snicker. <laughs> That was a, pretty clever. A famous former baseball player. Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth. I've, got a, I've got a book on Babe Ruth that I, I read just recently. He, at age seven, his parents put him in a school, Catholic school. And he stayed there. Never went back home. And uh, they saw him as he grew. They saw him playing ball one day. And the Baltimore Orioles signed it. It was an interesting book. Babe Ruth. A famous New York wide street. Fifth Avenue. That was my favorite bar when I was a boy. Fifth Avenue. Is that chocolate? You, yeah. yeah. You have streets. And you have avenues. And right. you have boulevards. Right. But this was a Fifth Avenue. <laughs> Twin letters. Twin letters. Eminem. Eminem. This dumb blonde. <laughs> this dumb blonde. Now, forgive me, ladies. This dumb blonde. Yeah, a, sorry, all blondes out there. Got a job working at the Eminem factory. She didn't last one day. She didn't. What happened? She kept throwing away the W's. <laughs> Now this one will be hard for you to get because this is prior to 1980. Oh no. Superman's other identity, his Clark first name. Clark, Clark. Clark Barr. Very good. Clark Kent. I oh, wouldn't well, I got that. But you know Superman movies. I don't yeah, know. I mean I know his name's Clark Kent. I didn't know that was a Clark Barr. I tell kids at school that has <laughs> Kids at school that, that wear that uh, uh, logo on the shirt with the big S and the emblem, of the, I said, Yo, do you know what that stands for? And they say, well, Superman. I said, no, it stands for suit. Shoot, <laughs> <laughs> What bees make? Honey. Oh, it's a candy bar. Candy bar. Bit of honey. Bit of honey. Still around after all these years. I need to get better on my candy bar trivia. There are so many products in the stores today that I remember when they came out. <laughs> <laughs> Two female pronouns. 
Is that the best clue you can come up with? Hershey. Oh. Who got that? Man, I have to applaud you on that. That's pretty good. <laughs> Are you getting all of them? Okay. Nut happiness. Almond joy. Almond joy. Yes. Finally. <laughs> the difference in the mound and the almond joy, the mound is dark chocolate and the almond joy is milk chocolate. Okay. A favorite day for working people. Payday. Payday. I don't That's see, good. Y'all are good. I think we ought to have two of those a week. <laughs> and when you're on Social Security, it's once a month. <laughs> And let me tell you, you can't make it on Social Security. Don't try. <laughs> can't hold on to anything. Butterfinger. Butter yeah, that's good. He's good. <laughs> that man's smart. He's smart, isn't he? He's smart. Okay. Bite with a crackling sound. Can't hear. Bright with a crackling. Bright with a crackling noise. I'm even trying to cheat and I can't read your rotten. Peanut brittle. Peanut brittle. Whenever you get old, it's not brittle, brittle it's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Yeah. No, they're good. I, I haven't eaten those in a long time. Oh, I don't eat much. The peanut candy. brittle, yeah, I get it. Yeah, that's true. A sun explosion. Starburst. Starburst. Good job, Constance. <laughs> okay, now we're ready for some jokes. We were almost ready for some jokes, wow. but we we got a, a few guests here, and. Uh, I'm yeah. going to be a little spontaneous. I'm getting it ready for you there, buddy. I'm just getting it out your <laughs> Being a little spontaneous here. Oh, uh, we got uh, another Valley TV personality here with us uh, tonight. Kim Parsley is here. We're going to have her come up for a minute. <laughs> uh, and uh, let's get Ruth and Isaiah up here, too. You got Ruth? <laughs> Ruth's like, dang it. <laughs> Did you hear Papa a lot? Pretty ladies. <laughs> Gary had good taste. <laughs> well, Kim uh, has a show on Valley TV called Kim's Kitchen that I've been supposed to make it to for a few a times. Guest a guest appearance. And we're going to do that. And uh, let's let's talk a little bit about your show right now. How's it going at, in Kim's Kitchen? It's going good. <laughs> <laughs> We're wrapping up season two. Are you? Shortly, a couple more episodes. And uh, next week, on October the 16th, I'll be helping uh, with the Instapot class at the 8th Annual Fog Craft Expo in mm. Dunlap. It'll be at the uh, Utenville Baptist Church. Free to come in. Ootenville so. Baptist, is that the one right between, uh, it's like not all the way in Dunlap, right. kind of at the yeah. middle point? Got About you. two miles. Okay. Yeah, they got a big electronic sign. Yes, uh, yes. And that is when? October the 16th, come and I'm going to have a big Instapart class. That's Tuesday. Yep, my yeah. birthday. <laughs> Your birthday? Well, happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> Any birthdays out there while we're talking about birthdays? Happy birthday to Dustin Asbury, 29 years old today. And we'll go ahead and wish you happy birthday three days early. <laughs> happy birthday, Kim. Happy birthday, Cassandra, I take it. <laughs> her daughter was pointing right at her, so. <laughs> Any other birthdays? Tomorrow. Happy birthday, Leslie Lockhart. She does a tremendous work. She does. All right, now uh, let's talk about this guest appearance. <laughs> 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 well, 
we better get them for Yeah. We've had tried several times, and either I've been busy or you and Albert has been busy. Oh, uh, no. You're just going to have to come on. I'll just take one for the team and come down there and eat all the good food. Well, I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to go on her show. Why? Well, you told me I'd have to show how I make brownies, and I ain't going to do it. Oh, I didn't say that. He don't want to give up his secret recipe. We told you you wouldn't have to. We did. Yes, we did. Is Billy going to cook? Fool, no, that could be scary. Be, <laughs> no Billy's way. He's not going to cook. He's going to be the tester. <laughs> yes, and I can do that all day long. I try it at my alley. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a gas stove, so you may kiss it on fire. <laughs> oh, I probably would. <laughs> no, he will be my tester at the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am definitely down with that. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We might have to bring you to Isaiah. Yeah, because we've already had one uh, Valley TV episode I with know. Nick and Patience and Allie. They all came. And you've been on our show before, so yep. Papa, so, it's just time for us to return the favor, buddy. we got to do a crossover. That's right. <laughs> Albert can eat. Uh, he, yes, he can. Yeah. He's mighty good at it. One time at church. We had a church. We have a church supper once a month, and we had eleven desserts. And I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. <laughs> <laughs> but the, ne the next month, this is the truth. The next I'll month, in front of my seat where I sat down, they placed a hog trough. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. And it takes him about a good 30 minutes to eat dessert. And I and that's the truth, too. I enjoy it. You do, don't you? He savors every last bite of it, don't he? If any of you wants to bake me a cake, bring it on. Yeah, and, and he'll prove it to you. <laughs> and we've also got Ruth Burton here with us. And uh, we're going to have you back as a guest. Been meaning to do this for a long time. But tell us a little bit about the book you wrote. Well, it's set in Pikeville. It's a Christian fiction. Mm -hmm. The Benefit of Grace. And I've been on your show once yes. about it. And I thought, well, that was, you didn't invite me back. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That was probably all you needed to know about me. Ouch. But. That was a radio interview, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> but, no, you were very kind about it, and, and Albert, too, and, and uh, I've had a lot of fun with it. It's been interesting. The people in Pikeville yeah. have been really kind about it and gotten a lot of support. It's still available. At Stanford. It's still at Stanford's, right? It's still at Stanford's. I so, thought so if you've missed it, um, if I haven't twisted your arm to buy it already, maybe <laughs> maybe I missed a couple people in the county. I don't know, but uh, it's, it's and the been, cover uh, of the book, is, uh, yeah, and the cover of the book is uh, one of your youngest daughter, though I believe, right? Yeah, Jenna no, kind of no, looks like her. Uh, no, it, it just it's looks kinda, like her, don't it? It look like her, yeah. but, but actually. Um, it's a shot taken of uh, John Hargis made a beautiful yeah, photo. Yeah, really good cover. Taken uh, looking south from there, at, kind of at cells of Main Street. Yeah. And it's a beautiful photo that wraps around. He was kind enough to let me use that. And Anthony Ladd, of course, yeah. is, does some great graphic design oh, and design good. on the mm -hmm. cover. He is excellent. So a lot yeah. of people helped him. It's, it's you enjoyed fun. it. Didn't it's are you fun. do? Are you ever thinking about doing a second book? Well, I thought about it. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see where that goes, but. I think you should. I think she's you should. a very sweet lady. When I got ready to publish my book, mm -hmm. it was going to cost me a, a arm and a leg to get it typed up because I <laughs> hand wrote it, and she she typed it for me for nothing. But then she's the one that said, Albert, in your book, you need to tell people what a rolling store is. Yeah, that's right. Because he lived some it. He some lived of these, it. 
young kids who don't remember anything before mm -hmm. 1980 don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but my grandmother relied on the Rolling Store. Oh, my let me tell you. And you delivered, even long, long after that, you delivered groceries on your way home to my grandmother. Wow. Many, many times. I did yeah, it for yeah, years. But listen, it. if you had a bag of cow feed or horse feed, and that woman got up in the truck with you, she would discard, she would pass up buying a bag of cow feed for her cow if it was if it happened to be the same design of the last one she bought. Because they made dresses no out of the hundred pound bags of feed. And, Didn't know that either. and if I had the same design of two weeks before, but I had, uh, she just didn't buy it. <laughs> and, and ladies would trade those with other ladies to get enough of one pattern. Oh, uh, and we bought eggs. Or so I've heard. <laughs> I don't want to go back as far as Albert did. <laughs> How long did you do the rolling store? How long? How many years was that until we got to the I, I more modern era? I guess I you saw say. Junior Nipper as a driver, Jack Nipper as a driver, Clifford Knight as a driver, and I guess he was the last one. It just finally phased out. And the good is okay. when they bought the store in '82, we quit home delivery. Now, Gary Burton oh. drove your delivery truck. Gary well, Burton. See, what kind of I remember <laughs> Gary. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. I could always depend on finding him. I knew where he would be in the break room. <laughs> in the break room. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, here's his favorite story. One okay. of them, I guess. Uh, he would deliver groceries. And, and some sisters would get in the truck. He had that old blue truck, I guess, at the time. And some sisters would get in the truck. Well, he would let one off at her house with her groceries and she'd go in. Well, the other sister wouldn't scoot over to the door. So he, he drove around town with this with this oh. up with. I wonder who it was. <laughs> That's true. True story. <laughs> he still has trauma over that. <laughs> but just look at him. How did he come out? He had an air then. He had an air then, he said. He'd probably be trying to get some kind of workers' comp these days. <laughs> That's now, pretty good. Back in those days, you sold live chickens, didn't you? Yeah. People really? traded chickens in for the groceries, and we had cooks on the back of the truck, uh, the rolling store, and, oh. and they came and picked them up. And then we, uh, one, one time I took a whole truckload of eggs to Chattanooga to sell them, because we had some, we had picked up 30, crate, 30 crates of eggs that week. That's how many we had taken in, and paid 30 cents a dozen for them. Boy, 30 cents a dozen. Good Lord. And I took them over there. And you can't pay 30 cents for anything nowadays. I took them to a big chain, and he said, well, bring in one crate, and we'll candle them. Y'all know what a candling machine is? They put the egg up next to a little old hole in a box, and you could look at that egg and see if it <clears throat> was fertile or not. And he did that for uh, several uh, minutes, and finally he said, okay, how many you got? And I said, 30 crates. 30 times 30. That's how many dozen of eggs I had. He said, I'll give you a quarter a dozen. We took a nickel loss on the dozen, but we got rid of that many eggs. But that's how many, that's, and people brought butter, sold you butter. Really? Homemade butter. I wish I lived in those days. Everything was cheap, sounds like. Yeah, but you've been a whole lot older by now. <laughs> <laughs> you lived in the good old days, though, Papa. The good old days. You did. Most you did. people that have the good old days, they were not old and they were not good. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to admit, things were a lot cheaper. Oh, yeah. Three cent stamps. Penny box. I mean, I'm so, I don't know anything you can buy for 30 cents right penny, now. Penny, penny, penny box. You can buy a piece of gum for that now. Well, that's true. 
That's true. Did you say 30 cents? What was that like now? There's no telling. What was 30 cents like now? Back then? Well, uh, minimum wage was 75 cents an hour when I got married. Yeah, and so minimum wage now is seven dollars and a quarter. So, so about seven, $7 maybe. maybe, yeah. It's about seven fifty now. So. Yeah, uh, yeah, probably around there. Okay. It's just hard to imagine things being that cheap, though. Nickel candy bar is ninety five cents now. Yeah. I had, you you worked at the theater, which was formerly what Stevens Pharmacy. Right next door. And you told me, how much was it just to go to a movie? It cost me 11 cents down on Cumberland Avenue. Then when they moved up here, it cost me 14 cents. Ooh, how dare them. They were right on Main Street. Right on, yeah. <laughs> they, had right, they had to add three cents to the charge. <laughs> now you go to a movie. Yeah. Woo. I bet it costs two dollars now, doesn't it? Two dollars. <laughs> I wish it did. Like yeah. yeah, and by the time you get a drink and popcorn, forget it. My, my popcorn was a nickel a bag or a dime a bag. Big, big old bag. <laughs> Must be nice, Papa. Yeah, I, I know. I always tell him I wish I lived back then. You used to have to pull with all those glass bottles, too, didn't you? Yeah, that's oh, true. All those. Yeah, those returnable, returnable bottles. Returnable bottles. That's true. Like stacks of those. <laughs> Kids would steal the bottles from us and bring them up in the store and sell them to us. <laughs> Randy, you never did do that, did you? No. <laughs> We've also got Isaiah Knowles with us, and uh, he does great photography, folks, if you have not seen it. Uh, every now and then, uh, we might play with his drone outside up here. I'm not going to say yes, not going to say no. And while we have strapped to it. Yeah, that's a, that's a secret, yes. Uh, if you guys haven't heard, we are uh, in the process of filming a reality show about the radio station. And uh, it's called Radio Reality, I believe will be the name of it. So have a long way to go. The show won't come out until the season is filmed. And I think we filmed through December. So, uh, but look forward to that. Uh, around the end of December, January, hopefully the show will be out. We're having a good time with that. Uh, I didn't, at first it was hard because there's a camera right there, you know, even if you eat. It's just completely different from this, Papa, completely different. But I'm getting used to it now. Now I don't even, it don't even feel like it's there. So, but anyway, the point of that, Isaiah is helping us on that show and he's going to do some aerial footage for the show. He does a great job with that. But tell us how you uh, got into that, buddy. I just bought a drone and started flying and <laughs> and just kept buying and got this photography. And well, now your work. sister is a yeah. photographer, right? Yeah. So is that kind of what got you interested in it? A little bit, but yeah. it's a lot different than, you know, using a DSLR. So. It is. It's completely yeah. different. Yeah, I mean, everything looks better from the air. So. It does. Yeah. It does. The footage he got from the glow run the other night at the fall fit, man, yeah. that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, did a good job. You did. Yeah. And when did you get interested in this or start to do it? About but, two years ago. About two years ago? I started with a cheap one and put my GoPro on it. And yeah. Flew it a lot and then just <laughs> got more into it. Y'all have to check it out. And like I said, you'll get to check out his aerial footage yeah. when you watch the show. And I want all of y'all to watch the show when it comes out. And Facebook uh, and YouTube. Yeah, he has uh, his, he has it on a YouTube channel, YouTube correct? YouTube channel and Facebook. Yeah. IOK Drone Photography. Okay. And the Facebook page is just... It's I, the same. IOK Drone Photography. Okay. I O K. I like that. I like that. <laughs> and I definitely need to check it out. He's got a good video up right now of the Fall Festival. And uh, it is really good. So I highly recommend all y'all check that out. And I definitely appreciate you guys coming up here and joining us. No problem. And now you're going to get to uh, hear some of Papa's jokes.
All right. And don't forget, like we said earlier in the show, feel free to uh, give us some of your jokes, too, if you want to. Papa usually does pretty good on this part, though. Uh, so let's hear some jokes, Papa. All let's right. hear some good jokes. There was this uh, elderly couple that lived in a mobile home down in Sarasota, Florida. Okay. Uh, one man was a widower and this lady was a widow and they had both lived in the mobile home park for several years and they would see each other once in a while in going to the mailbox or whatever you know but they had not become friends or anything right. but one night the owner had a to do for all the residents that lived there they had a, a community center that they met in once in a while so they had a meal that he footed the bill for and so he happened to be there the widower and the widow happened to show up too at the same time and as luck would have it they happened to sit at the same table and happenstance they were across the table from each other and so here they are uh, making a, some casual conversation okay but they're eating and he glances at her from time to time. It's the first time they've been eyeball to eyeball. Okay. And so he glances at her more and more as he sees a feminine figure that quite attractive. Right. And so he gets up enough nerve and he says, uh, will you marry me? <laughs> Dang. <laughs> How elderly was he? <laughs> <laughs> And after about six seconds, she said, yes, yes, I will. Well, uh, the meal was concluded, and after some more pleasantries, she went to her trailer, and he went to his trailer. Okay. The next morning when he got up, he was troubled because he couldn't remember if she said yes or if she said no. He couldn't remember if she said yes and or no? And he kept trying his best to put a definite answer I asked her if she could, would marry me but I don't remember if she said yes or if she said no <laughs> so finally That's he got bad. up enough nerve to call her okay and he said uh, you know just a few pleasant things and he said oh, I, I've been having trouble here lately remembering things I said do you remember last night when I asked you to marry me she said yes he said well I can't remember if you said yes or no. She said, I said yes, yes I will. Okay. And then she kept on and said, and I'm so glad you called, I couldn't remember who I said yes to. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was About a keeper, wasn't we'll she? Five minutes. Five this, more jokes. <laughs> this, old, this old hillbilly farmer, had a, a wife that was uh, well they've been married a long time 50 years and after 50 years of putting up with him and not taking out the garbage and not helping cook and not doing a lot of other things and then doing things that she didn't like she got to nagging I'm sure none of you are nagging wives those, those are the worst kind <laughs> Anyway, the only only way he could find any relief would be go out and get his old mule hitched up and plow. So about every day he'd wind up hitching up his mule and plowing because he got tired of listening to his wife nag all the time. But one day he's out plowing with his mule and he sees his wife coming across the field and she's bringing lunch to him. Well, he sees her coming so he pulls the mule over into the shade and sits down on a stump and she gets there and gives him his lunch so he's as he begins eating she starts in on him about what he didn't do that morning before he went out to plow and what's been gathered around the house that needs to be done and it just went on and on and on and here he is trying to eat all of a sudden his old mule kicked that woman in the head with her hind feet and killed her dead <laughs> right there in the field <laughs> well they lived in a very small community much smaller than Pine well, they had one church and so the pastor comes and spends some time with him and 
they make plans for the funeral and at the funeral the pastor is there and he feels like he should stay and support his member and so he's in the background watching as the mourners come by to pay their respects to her memory and to the man that's now a widower and he notices he didn't notice it to begin with but he got to notice that every woman that came through the line she would say something to the man and he'd shake his head up and down like he agreed with what they said yeah or liked what they said but every man that came through the line whatever they said to him he'd shake his head no negative and the preacher got to noticing it happened every time every time a woman came he the head would head nod head up yes. and down okay. and every time the man came no he'd go like this so whenever the funeral home said we're going to close up for the night the pastor is walking him out to his car and he said mr jones i want to ask you a question he said well what is it he said i noticed tonight the people that came by you would shake your head yes and you would shake your head no what what do you care to tell me what they said to you that made you respond the way you did he said well no he said every time a woman would come by she would brag on my wife's dress and i would agree that it was a pretty dress and they'd all say you had a good wife and he would agree you know and she sure does look nice you'd agree and he said well what about the men he said well every man wanted to buy my mule <laughs> And you took care of that nagging woman. <laughs> That's sad. Uh, in, in 1620, the Mayflower arrived at Plymouth Harbor. What did one old turkey say to the other when they saw the pilgrims? This is what the turkey said. Okay. Let's they see. look nice. Maybe they'll have us over for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and they sure did and I want you to listen to this one very closely get every word in 1969 the Americans land on the moon do you remember it the Americans, I had I had a man he's dead now but I'm so help me God this man said to me they didn't land on the moon they just landed out in the desert and pretended like this on the moon a lot of people think that it was fake you do hear that yeah. a lot. But here's, here's the story. Okay. The Soviets responded by announcing they would be sending a man to the sun. American engineers objected and said, if you send a man to the sun, he will burn up. Definitely. But the Soviets said, we're not going to go during the day. We'll go at night. <laughs> Oh, that was a joke. <laughs> Soviets Sorry. are pretty dumb. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. If. My bad. This is not a joke. If the sun were hollow, it would hold one million of our planets and 64 million of our moons. Does that give you an idea how big the sun is? Pretty big. Okay, there's these two old maids. What is an old maid? Tell me, what do you think an old maid is? Oh, Allie, I think this one's a good one. You've told this on the show before. Oh, this one's good, folks. Yeah. What is an old maid? The uh, a woman that never got married or something, or never dated or married. I don't know. Whatever. Some people it's choose. Hard, James. Some, people, <laughs> some women choose to be old maids because they don't want to fool with a man. Yeah, yeah. Some women don't want to be a parent. Some women have to take care of parents, and they don't have time for courtship and a family. But these three old maids are 96, 94, and 92, and they live together in the same home. 
Uh, and one night, the eldest, 96 years old, said, I'm going upstairs to take a bath. So she gets upstairs and she puts her foot in the water and she yells back downstairs to her two sisters, am I getting in the tub or am I getting out of the tub? <laughs> well, the second 94-year-old old maid, she says, well, I'll come up and help you. So she starts up the steps and pauses and she says, am I going up or am I going down? <laughs> The third sister, the youngest. 92, right. She said, I hope I never get that forgetful. Knock on wood. And then she started up the steps. She said, wait just a minute, I gotta go to the door, see who's there. <laughs> well, that one's good. <laughs> Got time? No more time? No more time. Well, you ended on the best joke that I, I've, I was always been my favorite right there, for sure. We enjoyed having you, folks. Definitely, I appreciate. Well, we both appreciate y'all coming out for our hundredth episode. That's right, folks. This is our hundredth episode right here on Valley TV Channel 18 and YouTube. We've had a good time tonight, haven't we, Papa? First time he told me about YouTube. I didn't know what YouTube was. He did not. That was that was, that was uh, after eight, 1980. <laughs> <laughs> then, then when he said we went viral, I didn't know what that meant. And I'm not going to tell you what he thought that was. <laughs> <laughs> but we really appreciate it. And uh, now we're going to send it back to Allie. The MC? No. Well, all right, that's it for our 100th episode uh, tonight. We filmed it right here live at Nickel Row Music Hall. And uh, so uh, had a good time once again, Papa. Can't believe we're at 100. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for joining us, guys. You guys have been Thank great. You. Thank you. Thank you.